Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Hello. For the next several weeks, I would like to reflect on Old Testament passages, some Old Testament theological concepts, and how those Old Testament ideas are reflected in the New Testament. And today I would like to begin with a passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, and then a passage from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1. In the letter to the Hebrews, we read about the Word and the Word, the Word of God, and the Word of God, the Logos, Jesus Christ, the Savior. The King James Version puts it with eloquence, God, who at sundry times in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. In the past, God has spoken by the prophets, but now he has spoken through the Son. And then picking up in verse 3, He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So we find the letter to the Hebrews telling us uh, that Jesus is the radiance of God. He is the brightness. Uh, sometimes the word fulgence is mean, an obscure English word in translation. He upholds the universe. Everything consists of, is created by, and is upheld by Christ, the Son of God. He sits at the right hand of majesty, and he is in marked likeness. He is the very representation of God, the exact imprint, as the English Standard Version says. And human language is inadequate to explain the concept of who Jesus is because he is the precise representative. He is God himself. And therefore, his revelation is superior to the angels. It is a more useful revelation. It is more excellent than the angels. It surpasses and supersedes any other revelation. And that's something that we need to remember. For the world finds many prophets, a lot of self-styled and self-proclaimed prophets, who claim that they have revelations about this and about that, often about uh, significant theological themes. How do their claims, how do their revelations line up with what we find in Hebrews 1? All revelations, prior and subsequent, are lesser revelations. They are superseded by the revelation of Jesus Christ. All must be considered in the light of Jesus, what he said, what he did, and who he is, the Son of God. Now the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 reflects about what the Word of God is as it goes forth into the world, a reading verses 11 through 13. So shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish all which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So the prophet tells us, speaking of the word of God, the spoken, the written, 
the proclaimed, the intelligible, comprehensible, beautiful Word of God as it goes forth into the world, as it was declared by him and others in Old Testament times. Number one, he says it goes out. It is proclaimed. It is spoken. It is written. The Word of God has gone forth into the world. And then the prophet says, number two, it does not return empty. It's not void. It's not meaningless or vain. The Word of God accomplishes, number three, the purposes of God. It is an effective Word as it is proclaimed. God's plan, number four, takes place. God's plan is accomplished. And then, furthermore, the prophet goes on to say that the Word of God brings joy. In contrast to what we sometimes find in the way that the things of God are placed before the world, in contrast to what is dull, in contrast to what is boring, in contrast to what is ineffective, it brings joy, and the Word of God also brings peace. The wholeness and the entirety of God, the completeness of God, is revealed in His Word. And then the Word of God also brings blessing. All creation rejoices. The trees clap their hands, and it brings forth useful and beauty, not briars and brambles, but beauty and useful plants. The Word of God is beautiful, it is useful, it is effective. And then finally, the prophet says that the Word of God is eternal. It lasts forever. Olam in Hebrew. Enduring, perpetual. It goes on. It is an eternal truth, an eternal reality forever. It will not be cut down or eliminated. The Word of God will never be surpassed. The Word of God will never disappear. Human beings sometimes like to think that we've come of age as a species on the planet, and we've outgrown God. We don't need the Lord anymore. The prophet says, no, the word of God is eternal. And the writer to the Hebrews tells us that Jesus Christ is the superior revelation of God, that he goes before all else in the light of all we encounter the Word of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the Son of God, is the revelation of light and life before us. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you for your Word, your Word as it came to us through the prophets and others, and your Word as it has come to us in Jesus, your Son. May we comprehend and use, be guided by, and live your work in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpctoranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Toranum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.